Now we have a panel discussion on customer experience for digital 2.0. Digital way of experiencing the world is interwoven in the customer with every possible segment now online with the rest getting there. Every brand is trying to differentiate through compelling experience in the customer journey based on their understanding of consumer behavior. Let's listen to their stories and learn from them. I would like to welcome Vishak Venugopalan, Head Solutions Consulting Adobe India to take the discussion ahead. Over to you. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Vaishak and I'm super excited to host an amazing panel of stalwarts from the industry today, discussing a topic which is of utmost importance to all brands across. Customer experience in digital 2.0, wherein which we will discuss how CX has changed over the time. What are brands really doing about it? What does research say? along with real life examples and stories which all of us could get inspired from. We are privileged to have a great panel of stalwarts with us today to discuss this topic. So without any further ado, let me introduce the panelists and I would like to call upon Anagha first on stage. Anagha, could you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Vaishak. Uh, I'm Anagha Bhojne and I lead media, digital and content marketing at Marico India. Thank you, Anaka, and welcome. Ananya, over to you. Thank you, Vishak. Uh, hi, everyone. I lead media and marketing at ABN Bay India and part of Graphline team. Thank you, Ananya, and welcome. Ashwin, if we can hear from you. Hello, everyone. This is Ashwin Vallodi. I lead uh, the Deloitte Digital Experience Marketing and Commerce Practice in India. Very glad to be here. Thank you, Ashwin, and welcome. Harish, over to you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Harish. I lead marketing and product for Surik Subi RS India. Welcome Harish. Vivek? Hello everyone, I'm Vivek Sharma. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for Pidlight. For those who don't know Pidlight, uh, we are a billion dollar company in the uh, field of construction chemicals, adhesives and pigments and we are brands like Fevicol, Fevicquick, Dr. Fixit and Raw. Glad to be here. Thank you Vivek. Shagata, over to you. Thanks, Vaishak, and pleasure to be here. Hi, everyone. I'm Shogata. I look after the digital and content marketing for Tata Communications uh, globally. And uh, pleasure to be here. Excellent. Now that we have heard from the panelists about their roles and responsibilities, I would like to kickstart this conversation. And I would like to do it a little hakke as such so that we get the participation from all the panelists very quickly. So. I would like to start with a rapid fire question, first of all, to the panel. If you can answer this in 15 seconds, nothing like it. Shagata, I would like to start with you as such. 2.0 means there is a second version as such, right? So is there really a 2.0 of customer? What are the two or three characteristics of a new age customer in your opinion? So Vishak, the first thing I would say is 2.0 is definitely a reality. Uh, 1.0 was more about the tech stack. 2.0 is making the tech stack work to deliver on what the customer expectations are. For your question about, is there a different customer? The answer is yes. I think the pandemic has accelerated uh, the customer's expectation levels in terms of what they look forward to from brands, right from uh, the message that gets them to consider a brand to the actual engagement and the actual uh, use that they find when they get the brand in their hands. So yeah, customers have evolved and 2.0 is definitely a reality. Thanks, Sagata. Vivek, if I can go to you, what are the two or three characteristics of this new age customer? First of all, customer has become far more digitally active, whether it is a B2C customer, consumer or a B2B customer. We have mm -hmm. seen that. Second is uh, the expectation from the brands is for quicker response and quicker deliveries. And that has been reset again. And third, I would say is uh, uh, customers, especially B2B customers, expect far more customization in offerings because COVID has led to some disruption in supply chains and they're looking for different products as well and solutions as well. So I think customization as per the need is uh, really a distinct change we have seen in the last couple of years. Thank you, Vivek. Yes, the expectation is sky high. Couldn't agree more. Harish, what is your opinion? What are the two, three characteristics of the new, new age customer? 
Yeah, I agree with Vivek. Uh, digitally active remains one of the top um, uh, top characteristics of uh, this day and age. I think understanding of value is evolving more and more, and it's it's not consistent. It's about that transaction and what maximizes value during that transaction, which is uh, which is very key. Mm-hmm. Privacy, I think, uh, uh, a need and understanding of privacy, uh, and very very it's very very uh, subjective. Uh, the balancing between privacy and customer experience, they themselves understand very, very uh, well. And finally, I think hyper-local is uh, uh, an attribute that I see. They want to understand what is around them, ecosystem, wherever they are at that point. Thank you, Harish. The importance of privacy and being hyper-local. Well said. Uh, Ashwin, if we can move on to you. What are the two, three characteristics in your opinion? Yeah. No, thanks, thanks, Vaishak. I think for us, I'll base it off of this... Uh, 2021 marketing trends report that Deloitte just uh, is, is kind of sharing out with all, all of uh, the, the user base and its customers. Mm-hmm. And I'll pick up two themes there. Okay, One is that uh, the essence of what the customer wants today is about choice, convenience, and a fair bit of uh, options that they want to achieve through the digital channel. And obviously, online and offline, both channels. So the, what ha- what is happening, we are seeing increasingly in the last few years, is this has doubly accelerated in terms of what the customers and, uh, are trying to be. Purpose, for example, has become very, very central to the buying decisions across B2B and B2C. Mm-hmm. And we will see that uh, unfold in a variety of ways in the coming months. So that, okay. that would be one characteristic I'll highlight in addition to what the fellow panelists mentioned. Thank you. Purpose. Very interesting indeed, Ashwin. Ananya, what is that you have to say about this? Two or three characteristics of this new age customer. I think uh, customers, every like consumers uh, generally have become more inquisitive and uh, they question every aspect of what they are paying or what they are in, in for. Uh, more so, I believe they are seeking more authentic experiences. Mm-hmm. So uh, because of digital, like, they, they want they can see through a lot of things that uh, brands and uh, like you know products otherwise promise so authenticity right from communication to uh, like you know experience and in terms of value is absolutely essential for all the brands and companies to keep yeah thank you for saying that Anaya. anaga what is your opinion two or three attributes of this new age customer um in addition to what everyone has said i think um If I had to add to it, um, I think today's consumer is a lot more exposed and a lot more researched, uh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, He or she is very sure of what they want. I think they go in knowing what they want, right? That that is a big difference today that we are seeing. And lastly, I resonate with what um, uh, Harish was also saying, that they're looking for brands that they can personally connect with in terms of values, in terms of purpose, whatever it may be, you know, whether it is sustainability, whether it is greater good, et cetera, right? But I think that that is the purpose driven is also definitely something that we're seeing more of. Thank you, Anika. Yes, it's, it's, it's actually heartening to see that panel agreeing on the values, the purpose, and today's customer being dynamic and you know easy to lose and digital first, a very interesting indeed. Now let's step into some broader topic as such. And Anika, I would like to start with you. Uh, now that we have set the context that expectations are sky high, the, the, the beliefs are actually changing as such. Uh, from the field of marketing, uh, tell us, in your opinion, what are the primary barriers for the marketing department and the CMO in delivering a great customer experience in this age? See, for me, at least the top two, three things would be, um, okay, at the risk of sounding um, uh, controversial, but I think there's also a degree of indifference. I think one of the things is, do I really need this? And do I need this to the full end? Is a question um, I don't think we've answered enough of. And I, I'm speaking this in slightly in generalistic terms, uh, Vishak. Mm-hmm. But, you know, consumer experience largely is not just about is there a consumer complaint and how am I readdressing it? But there is a lot more to it, right? It's across the entire journey. And there might be parts in the journey where that indifference might set in. And that, I think that is what breaks the entire journey and experience. So one is that for me, indifference. Mm -hmm. Um, Second would be, 
um, not getting the right technology in place, right? Like we've been talking about tech stacks uh, for a while now, mm. but I don't think you anyone's looked at it holistically. Mm. Uh, and when I say holistically, it's not just technology, but holistically across all departments in the organization. I think it'll only happen when everyone comes together. So while marketing talks about it, sales talks about it, are we talking through every department? Does does it across, like even supply chain, does, does it see merits in it? So I think as an organization, when you start living that customer experience and putting the consumer centricity uh, in place, that is what is critical. And I think that is one of the drawbacks that I think. Thank you. Thank you, Anika, for sharing that. And, uh, you know, this indifference and, you know, not having the marketing tech and the complete buying as such, very interesting topics in, uh, indeed. And, and I would like to tap into, uh, you know, the experience of Vivek sir here. Vivek sir, you know, tell us, you know, uh, what is your opinion about the same? Is that the top barriers that you see from a B2B and B2C perspective as such? Has the customer journeys changed? What are you seeing uh, from your brand's perspective? See, the barriers to deliver an excellent customer experience um, lies in many areas. Mm -hmm. And I will just uh, take the thought of Anaga and, and stretch it forward and then add to it. The issue is not availability of stacks or technology. The issue is that how do you implement? Because implementation of stacks is the, is the key issue because you need to have the right talent to implement it. Mm -hmm. Once you implement the right stacks, then you begin to get a lot of data across. Yeah. Are we using analytics from the data emerging from stacks to actually then, uh, what I say, derive personas for customers, persona for consumers, as per the journeys, and then customize your interfaces and customize your offerings. Uh, and, and last but not the least, I think uh, marketing, as Anaga said, is about actually uh, a coordination of various touch points across the organization to deliver the experience. Marketing is no longer marketing department alone. Marketing is product, R&D, supply chain, delivery, customer service, post uh, service, uh, and sales and everyone else. And so I think the role of a marketing head or a CMO is about conducting an orchestra and deriving music out of it. So one has to be, one has to perform that role. Yeah. Um, and I think the ways of working which marketing has to lead across the organization in this context, they have to change. They have to change because you're implementing stacks, a lot of data is coming. So you have to work as much with the IT department, as much with the field sales, which, which addresses the customer, as much with sales and as much, I would say, with, with their own sales, sales field and customer service or post sales service. So I think that those are the barriers and marketers have to go beyond their own, what I call uh, fascination with technologies to ensure that they conduct this orchestra well to deliver music to the customers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All hands on deck and the concert master is the marketing and the CMO. It's well. not easy because I think uh, marketers have to drive a culture change. If mm -hmm. we have to drive, a, uh, sorry, drive a good customer experience, they have to drive a cultural change across the organization. And it's a long haul. It's not a tech change alone. True, true. Long haul indeed. It's interesting that you mentioned about all the barriers as technology is in abundance, but the implementation and getting value out of it is, is, is a, one of the barriers as such. And, it, and we are lucky to have a leader who can speak in depth about this as such. Ashwin, over to you. What is your perspective about this getting maximum out of technology via implementation? No, I'll, I'll just uh, a few, few thoughts on that, right? I mean, the, uh, for every uh, opportunity, you can see it half empty or half full. So obviously, since the question poses on the half empty aspect, let me highlight a few things where, uh, you know, what we see working across a bunch of uh, sectors and industries, both B2B, B2C in, in this area. See, see, as far as marketing goes and all of the points that Vivek and Anaga and uh, made on in terms of the uh, you know uh, getting these stacks together and getting the answer there are two three things also that uh, we are we are seeing you know one is that uh, are we going far enough or is it delivering to the promise requires first and foremost authentic understanding or authentic appreciation of like look this is a transformation that we are in it for the long haul and that's something that uh, it can't be for optics, it can't be tactical, it has to be long-term. And that requires not only the organization or the brand to kind of take this on and execute to Vivek Sir's point 
on multiple levels, it requires resilience to sustain this because ups and downs will come. The, the concept of resilience, you know, you see many, you can't, you can't be a flash in the pan, do certain things, implement a tech, and then wait for all goodness to happen. This has to sustain over a whole bunch of uh, steps that the org needs to take. So that's one. Second, the, 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 the way to address it, what we are uh, seeing also is sometimes organizations grapple with this in unique ways. Uh, again, they'll, they'll kind of say that, look, if the problem is vast, is inaction an option? I want to kind of categorically state that, look, that is not the way out. Like, let everyone else do, and I'll follow after all the kinks are sorted out. Now, in this case, we have seen our surveys and research shows us that brands who are not taking this action headlong are suffering and are getting left behind in terms of their balance sheets and PLs. Not just so, marketing has direct impact on uh, on company performance. It has to be done authentically, and you can't do it one off. Resilience is something, a characteristic that we encourage highly, especially in the post pandemic world and during the part that how do you be resilient and now how are you positioned to thrive? Even if you see now, I'll just take one more second. Many brands are coming out of this pandemic, hopefully doing much better. And some are feeling the heat of being left behind. And the question is why? And some of it is in the root causes of the, what I talked about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well aligned to, you know, one of the search that we have found out that CX leaders outpace their competition by a large margin, especially after the pandemic as such. Uh, very interesting insights indeed. Um, I would like to change of gears here and Ananya, I would like to go to you next because you talked about the purpose and, uh, you know, the connection as such. Uh, and of course, empathy comes as top of list for all marketing, I I'm sure, right, as such. So uh, tell us about, is, is empathy the future of experience as such, in your opinion? I think empathy is actually the presence, uh, like is the present of everything. Like it's in fact the root uh, for even innovation and mm -hmm. uh, like you know, new thinking and identifying new gaps. And uh, I believe a lot of brands have done really well in, uh, in the last one and a half years of pandemic have done it because they have identified or associated or related with the customer at, the, at an empathetic level, right? Uh, one of our very recent examples uh, of a campaign we have done in uh, Budweiser mm -hmm. uh, was right at the age of wave two. So we were almost prepared with a very high decibel IMC campaign and wave two happened. So one option for us was to just completely lie low and uh, not do anything. And like, you know, the job's easier for us because if you're not doing a campaign, so, uh, so like, you know, the te teams technically can be free. What we actually did was we utilize our social media uh, for fans and followers as currency for uh, promoting the pleas that uh, that were there out there in social uh, for, mm -hmm. for uh, like, you know, for oxygen, for beds, for everything. Now, as a brand, like, you know, we could have easily chosen a path of remaining silent Right and not associating and to be honest, we are not associated at all with anything to do with healthcare and well-being. Right, mm -hmm. but yes, uh, but I think brands are run by people, and if we don't uh, relate ourselves to the to our consumers and customers, like you know, at a very base level of empathy, then we lose a huge opportunity for long-term, uh, like you know, brand building. Indeed, indeed. Thanks for sharing that example. Very interesting, indeed, uh, Ananya. Um, Shagada, if I can move on to you as such, right? So in your opinion, what, uh, and you know, uh, you come from an industry where, you know, B2B uh, is, is a large focus for you as such. For you, what is that, you know, top barriers in marketing and content marketing in delivering that expectations of a B2B customer? Because it's not one individual, it's like, uh, you know, it's a, it's a brand where in which multiple individual engages with your brand in, in a B2B business. So uh, that's a very good point you make, Vishap, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a genuine problem, uh, sometimes intentional, sometimes not, right? Okay. I think uh, if I were to pinpoint one uh, singular reason or one, one, one uh, you know, cornerstone kind of a situation, it would be the inadequacy of information mm -hmm. and the, the ability to not able, be able to take it to the right person at the right time, right? 
and which is where you know personalization becomes a key mm. so since we since we are talking about enterprise marketing here right mm. and i'll i'll try and paint an example for you since we're talking about uh, uh, enterprise marketing here we, if we start wide talking about a region right and then from that region we start to narrow it down into a particular industry and within that particular industry we narrow it down into a particular business or account or a customer right and then we narrow it down finally to an individual the the ability to actually transcend from something as broad as a regional uh, you know right to compete or right to play for an organization like ours mm-hmm. to be able to take it down right to the level of a segment of one to talking to an individual one on one be it in line with the conversation that are either happening or they are about to happen or their progress to a certain degree depending on the stage in the buying buying journey is i think what is what is a what is a genuine challenge right but the good news is that with the right tech with the right mindset and empathy is cuts both ways right empathy cuts for customers as well as it cuts internally for the organization also right with the right mindset i would say that marketers today have uh, you know reached a fair distance from where we were pre covid in terms of making that happen right so so if i were to look at a silver lining from all the catastrophe that has you know transpired around us over the last now two years right this is one area where i think we have evolved as a collectively as a team of as a team as a as a as a clan of marketers have done quite so yeah so therefore getting it down to that to that level of personalization talking to a to a customer about what they want what they need and understanding and showing their understanding across to them i think that is one big challenge that that keeps us awake at night very interesting segment of one we have been talking about that and you know it's it's, it's interesting here that the same applies for b2b business as well as that right harish if we can move on to you you mentioned about this perceived value of the customer in the rapid fire itself right so uh, i would like to hear your thoughts on you know uh, the changing customer journeys you mentioned about perceived values and the brand that you actually run for as such what are you seeing uh, recently uh, now that we are actually on the path to recovery as such so sure, thanks so so uh, with the pandemic i think it, it applies to all industries but specifically mm-hmm. in the payment space that i uh, that i represent we saw a great shift towards digital so there was a, an exponential shift towards digital mm-hmm. but what we've been realizing is that that the industry per se has been growing the share of uh, offline might be changing here and there but there is still offline presence that at a consumer level persists so essentially um, so to give an example at the beginning of the pandemic if you if you go back and see right at the outset when these rules got notified the ones that came first to call to action what your local kirana store uh, owners right because uh, e-commerce could not deliver uh the large format stores were still not able to you know understand all the norms and put together and open their stores but the kirana stores quickly moved to a semi digital play so you you could see them put you know those rows in front of their outlets quickly move to digital take orders on whatsapp they close to your house they would know that there is an elderly couple at your house so they need to deliver they need to answer your calls mm. so i think this play between digital and non digital continued through this pandemic so while we saw it as digital payments it was actually more engaging with your hyper local kirana store and when the pandemic moves when when we go back to you know in store visits these interactions will move to the offline space not necessarily online so there will be a very interesting play between offline and offline with online which will uh, persist i think the second uh, thing about the value perception that we re- realized is when you have multiple modes of payments and this also ties very well to telecom and industry have worked in before mm-hmm. uh, where there is the phenomenon of multiple sim cards people are always aware where they are getting the best deal at some point in time mm-hmm. so it might be in the payment space where i step up to make a purchase on a transaction it might be online offline i know which of my instruments which of my wallets to touch at that point in time to extract the best amount of value so i understand the value of the good but also the transaction medium to that extent and the same rule applies to uh, telecom where i have a multiple sim card holder and i know which one to recharge at that point in time so that which one do i use my data from which do i do i use my voice from and you know extract the maximum amount of value at the same amount of consumer experience so this interplay between consumer experience and value uh, is uh, very interesting because the understanding of value goes beyond only usage and transactions it goes to things like how can i self service more if i am dependent on you 
to meet my needs then in my mind your value perception has gone down a couple of notches at the same price vishak can i add to the empathy with an example please we go ahead see empathy is about really understanding where your consumers are and communicating with them and doing things for them which are beyond your brand propositions so i let me give an example in covid times fevicol proposition is unbreakable bonds and empathy is all about talking to your consumers in that times of hard very hard very hard times about issues which concerns them about societal issues about concerns them so fevicol did have been has been doing a campaign around this so when the covid started we did a campaign around how we need to maintain social distancing and we went against a proposition of coming together and we actually took the logo of a two elephants and put them apart saying stay apart you know maintain social distancing and when the uh, lockdown opened then we put out this emotional messages about having the courage to go out and conquer the world and still meant be cautious through emotional poems done by piyush pande when the second lockdown happened then we again did a similar message but the second point i want to convey is that brands create empathy amongst not only consumers or brand have to create empathy amongst all stakeholders True. not just by communication alone but by doing things so for example um fevicol works a lot with contractors and so does dr fix it and we found that contractors were not finding business because consumers were afraid of handyman and uh, these people coming into their homes so we created safe site practices and we created videos and modules around them and communicated it to all our contractors online through you know uh, through digital mediums we trained them we certified them we gave them aids as to how they can actually go to consumer home certified by dr fixit and fevicol and mm -hmm. still get business then we enabled our contractors to get cash cash was in hard supply they could exchange their point they want with them for cash we gave them insurance we enabled business for them so the point is brands create empathy in hard times and all this was done by fevicol and dr fix it using digital means so we used technology to create empathy with the stakeholders by communicating with them about the issues which concern them societal issues and doing things for them and addressing their issues in life not just business alone so brand have to go beyond business to create empathy it's not just about business and selling yeah yeah going beyond the brand's own proposition as such and and i always say this customer experience the first word customer is your employee your partner your front line you know everyone as such everyone. Right? yeah it's not just the consumer alone uh, you know don't get deceived by that particular word customer stakeholders because everyone yeah. owns the brand nowadays it's not just only the person who buys the brand everyone has a stake in the brand true 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 now you brought up a very interesting word in there stakeholders as such and i would like to you know shift this conversation into internal stakeholders the leaders in, within the organization right so uh, you know organizational partnership how has that changed how is the relationship between cmo and cfo and the cio and the C, you know amongst the whole leadership how has that changed from pre pandemic and now so that every everyone is actually you know aligned to deliver the promise of cx and anani i would like to start with you because you know uh, being the head of media as such i'm sure you have this interesting conversation about roi and the and the budgets and stuff like that what is your opinion how has organizational partnership has it changed to begin with so i think uh, like you know the way i uh, used to put it in turn is that while platforms are becoming wall garden our internal departments have to like lower down their walls right so so i think that's the first step in terms of just uh, like you know absolutely collaborating understanding that uh, a cio or a cmo like you know a cio may have a great marketing idea cmo can have a great technology idea i think it uh, it just like you know just building that bridge that we are in it together and uh, like you know because tech, uh, like for example a simple product that we implemented right at the first wave of covid uh, was a beer uh, beer and alcohol delivery service in mumbai mm -hmm. uh, because maharashtra being one of the very few states that allows for liquor delivery now uh, from uh, from a very uh, quick uh, like you know the first part of it was to build a platform that's where the technology team uh, took a lead but the second part of it was to sustain and make that platform profitable now that that's where marketing you uh, needs to be a hand in glove in terms of 
what what will the customer do or consumer do on that platform how will they how will the experience be uh, like you know completed end to end so some way it is actually not if if and uh, if or or it's genuinely in all cases an and scenario right and i, I like you know i've seen uh, that with pandemic uh, has only made that collaboration more agile mm. and fast forwarded that I, i think otherwise we would have been going uh, like we would have kept going in a uh, typical inertia uh, like you know fashion and uh, i believe intent and imagination is also very critical aspect uh, to be worked on by both the verticals or all the verticals together because uh, i i have seen personally uh, across places i've worked at that the the collaboration requires like you know one clear intent who we are doing it for mm-hmm. and if that is very clear i think and exactly customer consumer experience like you know uh, if that person is at the heart of it Uh, it's much much easier to do. Vishal, yeah. if I may just chip in uh, here out of turn, sorry for that. But just to share to Ananya's point, like one observation that I have had personally, and not necessarily for my organization, but mm-hmm. speaking to friends and peers and colleagues across the industry, right? Mm-hmm. I think what has recently started, not recently, at least for the last two years, has started happening, is as the definition of success for an organization itself is evolving, right? And what is happening as an outcome of that evolution? is the role that different teams which we perceivably used to play earlier that is also kind of lines are blurring there right so it is it is it is kind of becoming a shared responsibility success is a shared responsibility as against individual kpis or csfs or whatever we call it within respective organizations that i think is prompting more shake of hands that i think is prompting you know like anandya said breaking down of walls and that that i think is actually getting organizations galvanized in the same direction mm-hmm. and again if i may say so the reason why this is happening is because consciously again going back to the point of empathy consciously organizations are putting the customers at the center of everything that they do right so that is something that i i'm, I'm seeing a very positive trend evolving and uh, you know if it if it continues the way it's going i think we'll have a very very fruitful and fertile uh you know landscape to play on in the next yeah. few years yeah 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 you're putting the customer at the center of course that, that itself changes the definition of success indeed okay change in gears to technology a bit as such right so i'm sure uh, all of you are actually evaluating implementing taking benefits of and you know increasing utilization of technology to cater to all these demands and also this changing world as such what are top of mind technological trends in your marketing technological trends in your mind be it connecting offline to online be it being more agile when it comes to data be it tackling and fighting the cookie apocalypse whatever that is um, anaga if i can start with you what are top of mind technological trends and bets that you are actually thinking about as of now um a couple of tr- uh, tech trends right uh, one i think one of the things that we've touched upon in every question that we've been answering here is definitely the omni channel right. uh, the offline to online to offline again um, offline is not going away online mm-hmm. is not going away i think just the fluidity of that journey is real and that i think is definitely a trend that we will need to work on mm-hmm. with this you will also expect a higher human and automation integration i think the need for automation is real Mm-hmm. uh but the need for human conversations is equally uh, true mm-hmm. uh that's not going away so i think the handshake there is something that we i at least i look forward to i think hyper personalization is something that is in on trend right now um, i i heard harish also sp- speak about it earlier and customers are getting consumers are getting used to it right mm-hmm. i i think as an experience as a part of the entire experience when you talk to me about me about what i want specifically it is a much better experience it's a much better conversation it's a lot more human uh, though there's a lot of automation that has gone behind coming to that point um, i think those three are the top three for me really thank you anaga for sharing, uh, sharing that ashwin i know you have lots of insights to share especially from the recent research that you have done what are the top of mind technological trends that in your opinion that you see yeah no thanks i think we that, that's something obviously we we do on a regular basis the the reports that you talked about which uh, uh, i'll i'll just reference a few of them and i think 
see basically uh, the trends that are coming through are see this whole thing and you talk about that whole uh, the, the the cookie less world uh, we'll have to see i think if you have to own customer experience you'll have to own the customer data that trend in its varied form of technology will every organization and brand will have to act on if you own the want to own the experience you'll have to own the data and in all its myriad forms that will see a fair degree of fruition the second trend is uh, is uh, also or a second observation and i'll come to the trend is uh, given there is also i mean although while people there's a lot of positioning to say look uh, uh, tech uh, doesn't matter and you can be on an and conversation i'll tell you what i mean by that like you can buy something and buy something more and buy a and buy a marketing campaign solution and buy something and and what it has led to uh, and I'm, i'll be curious to hear from my fellow panelists as well is a uh, a landscape that is proliferated with hundreds and hundreds of solution options both in sourced and outsourced and that has led to deep fragmentation of information and aggravated the inefficiency problem in organizations so the the trend that emerges out of that is radical simplicity in martech and that's where uh, we will see some more action coming in the only question is how many folks will act to what extent and some who will sit and choose in action as an option and obviously the 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 stakeholders will appropriately recognize those those organizations so that's the second big thing i see coming lots of conversation around the space for uh, simplicity one such simplicity trend is around the cdp which is an interesting connect okay mm -hmm. the reason to make a customer data platform or a verticalized platform is about collapsing these tech uh, barriers and debt so that's something that that will be very i'm i'm very encouraged the amount of conversations we are having with all of uh, some of you are on the panel already uh, is is just mind boggling and lastly this aspect harish talked about but i'll just is this whole question respecting a person a customer's relationship and trust so privacy okay uh, do not disturb the right to information and the right to respect that individual as you and i think vivek you mentioned it in some earlier interaction as well uh, that don't just bombard me with lots of things when i don't need it how do you use tech to make it topical timely and relevant you know that part uh, there is uh, there are lots of aspirational statements but to make it happen the 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 path is long still okay so those those three i would say in the next 12 months uh, we would see some uh, some good uh, developments thanks ashwin the importance of investing in data which is equal to customer experience and the problem of fragmentation which is real thanks for sharing that harish uh, keen to know your opinion about this i think yeah uh... Pretty much what the panelists spoke about, but yes, uh, if I have to split it into B two B and B two C, I mm -hmm. think importance of automation tools, marketing stacks, which help on the B two B side, do the right amount of attribution, helps really define the ROI better. To move from last mile attribution to first click, you know, that's that's a big journey and takes a lot of time and investing in the right sort of technology in the back end. On the B two B space, we've also been seeing a lot of digitization of the employee benefits, if I may, because Again, as you said, employees are a key stakeholder. So, digitizing those benefits and personalizing to the power of one, because if an employee is in a, in a work from anywhere world today, you will not be able to administer a learning and development or a or a health and wellness benefit for them, which is you know driven by you. Give them the power and let them do it at their end. On the consumer side, on building this stack, I think my keen interest is around discoverability. You know. Okay. Uh, don't uh, don't allow your consumers to come to you and then look go through 10000 sks to find the one that they are interested in if you can aid that discoverability through building building more and more intelligence uh, look alikes uh, some things you know uh, association of what they bought before that that helps across industries i believe uh, a lot and uh, and also uh, it has to add into some sort of a privacy agenda as we spoke because uh, should i be contacted contacted what is my uh, preferred mode of contact what times am i more receptive on and if that can be built in as intelligence 
uh, with access to data i think that leads to better conversations with consumers and clients yeah 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 so anticipating the needs whether they don't want any communication uh, along with combined with uh, you know you mentioned about another underrated things in my opinion which is multi touch attributions to equally to logically divide the pie to actually uh, you know to its uh, due creditors as such okay time for a quick rapid fire round as such um and uh, harish i would like to start with you uh, in hindsight what you would have done let's say you know this is fi 19 and 20 before all this roller coaster ride has started as such in hindsight if you would have done one thing in fi 19 what would that be i think we started on on making promoters out out of our own employees mm -hmm. uh, but i think that's a more and more important step for us uh, it it puts forth as a brand practitioner or as a, or as a uh, brand uh, a person who's responsible for the brand it, mm -hmm. it helps project your brand in the right way you know by putting out the right messaging your yeah. employees have to be aligned to the brand that you put to. Yeah. and it also helps rationalize your marketing costs a lot because yeah. your employees have to first speak about your brand then only your consumers are going to eventually speak about them so i think uh, building some sort of promotional mechanisms identifying the right promoters in the organization and, and empowering them enough so that they can speak about the brand in multiple forums uh, mm -hmm. is one aspect mm -hmm. would have like to start yeah. earlier yeah creating promoters out of employees vivek if i can move on to you in hindsight what would you have done very difficult to say uh, i think what this last one and a half years have demonstrated to us is that um, customers and consumers can move at a rapid pace in these extraordinary times mm -hmm. and they often move faster than brands so what I realize is that perhaps we could have created more capacities and capabilities in digital area across the B2B and B2C businesses. So that we could have taken far better, I would say recognition and far better leveraging of the situation which existed. So whether it was moving faster with mothers and hobbies in art and craft area because they were moving digital, everyone's locked up in homes mm -hmm. or whether it was a B2B customers who were becoming far more digitally savvy uh, we were, of course, in the midst of implementation of marketing automation with B2B customers, uh, automating our uh, dealer order program so that dealers could order without uh, our salesman going to them, or whether a site visit could happen digitally. We implemented everything. But I think where uh, we could have done it differently if we had more capacity and capability internally in terms of talent, uh, I think we could have done it faster. I yeah. think that to me is the key learning that we have to look forward. Technology is moving faster, consumers are moving faster, and marketers also have to create capabilities and capacities internally to take, uh, I would say, advantage of these uh, faster moving yeah. trends. Yeah, investing in digital skills and talent. Uh, thank you, Vivek, for sharing that. Chagata, in hindsight, what would you have done? So I'll go a little tactical on this, uh, but I would have uh, wanted to implement uh, conversational yeah. commerce way back in 2019. Because that this 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 unforeseen circumstance of the pandemic would have been, uh, you know, a good litmus test as to how the conversational commerce can actually work in the B two B space, especially in enterprise marketing. Uh, I've been toying with that idea for quite some time, but for whatever reason, it didn't get done. But yeah, that's something I would have loved. Very interesting conversational commerce, of course. Anaga, in hindsight, what what would you have done? Um, I think one of the things I have to say would be uh, jumped on the D2C bandwagon a little earlier. Mm. Um, because with the situation, with the pandemic, I think what we ended up doing is playing catch up, right? Um, it was not something that we were uh, prepared for in terms of uh, technology as well as the entire infrastructure, the back end um, uh, uh, logistics of it. I think that is, in hindsight, if we had jumped that. Uh, onto that earlier, we would have been in a better position, at least in 2020, for sure. Um, that's one. And second, I think I would be, uh, I if I could go back and change something, one would be to do more content and go beyond advertising, right? So I think engaging content is something I think we missed the uh, bus on a little bit. Yeah, going deep to see and, and content marketing. Thanks for sharing that, Anaga. Uh, Ananya, rewind the time machine. You are in 2019. What is that you would have done? Well, uh, like, you know, I would have invested in Nike stocks, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, uh, I think pretty much uh, with, uh, in fact, completely agree with what Vivek said, right? Uh, in terms of hiring and training, uh, uh, I, I think it, it would have been 
a brilliant opportunity to reap uh, much more uh, if we would have uh, like you know not just invested in technology but also invested in hiring and training uh, like you know it's very ironic because pandemic had caused a massive attrition across the industry so so like you know definitely i think that would have been a good investment uh, at that time yeah digital talents and skill and of course uh, very uh, very important indeed uh, ashwin what is that you would have advised uh, your clients as such uh, you know in hindsight as us yeah i think uh, a lot of it uh, got covered but three three things again you know just one is see uh, a lot of people got literally deer in the headlight type of a situation last year in terms of brands uh, how they could react and all so the only thing we uh, we would advise is take action okay this this is the new normal uh, you know uh, first persevere then be resilient and then thrive you know so this aspect of doing that some people got uh, caught unaware so we, and uh, there was a little bit of uh, too much of analysis in terms of what to do okay so that that's something that we were continuously advising all our clients to act to kind of third second thing which i thought uh, we did well uh, but uh, it needs to keep on getting accelerated is this uh, the scheme that was become on and off in this conversation is embracing all this uh, this pace of dynamic change you know this this thing is no longer uh, about large lengthy long drawn processes of decision making and things like that it's about an mvp style approach to brand to consumer Uh, connects to control to all of it you know so rather than getting mind numbing uh, detail of every single aspect of the enormity of the challenge most effective organizations took action and moved you know on all of this thing that i thought uh, was uh, went uh, well but obviously has got accelerated this year compared to last year and lastly i think this whole uh, of aspect of uh, all inclusive stakeholder management you know Uh, marketing uh, needs to be very inclusive uh, it used to be uh, perhaps in a certain preserve as i could see some uh, strains of uh, that that uh, aspect being uh, kind of shared by folks here that that inclusivity inclusivity both with all stakeholders internal employees all of the parts that uh, can get further uh, kind of bolstered in as as we go along. so those would be the things that we were focused on advising and that kind of maps to what our experience as well thank you for sharing that one thing i couldn't uh, help but notice is that the even though the question was hindsight all of these things that you the the amazing panelists said right be it going deep to see conversational commerce investing in talent and stakeholder management uh, and you know i all of them are still so valid right and you know it's not that we yeah. have missed the bus or anything of that sort put pedal to the metal and you know i'm sure success is on our way i would have loved to have this conversation go on and on with this amazing panel as such but yes vivek if i can add one last point uh, on a subject which is very close to my heart see we are talking of stacks and martech hmm. uh, what i would like to say martech should enable actually convert the digital i would say enthusiasm into digital discretion and let me define discretion and marketers we have to be very very conscious of that digital discretion in the sense that we have so much of technology we can customize our messages we can customize our offering we can reach customers through various touch points and perhaps we are overloading the consumers and customers hmm. we are overdoing it but i martech should use the technology and analytics to determine when a customer wants to be contacted and reduce the touch points and communication overload we should be we should use technology to actually reduce the overload of digital uh, communication second discretion should be in respecting the privacy which we touched upon but that discretion needs to come far more so uh, i believe that this technology while yes we embraced it we were and we were playing with it like a child but that enthusiasm has to convert itself into discretion with better use of analytics better use of personas better use of recognizing changing consumer journeys less is more in technology is what i would for say sure, for sure no, for sure for no, sure i completely agree in fact like uh, uh, one thing that i will be taking away from this is what ashwin also called out right radical like radically simplification of uh, like you know tech, tech stack i, I think that's essentially yes. what what our endeavor what our milestone is because a lot of challenges we have like uh, whether it's omni omni channel whether it's uh, like you know offline 
digital you know attribution and uh, these these are go- going to be always on challenges i think like you know b- because customer experiences touch points platforms are just new new and more and more are uh, coming in abundance right i think it's just the agility and simplification of how we like to like you know uh, build our practice and like you know drive organizational behavior as we were here also called out earlier right so so i think that'll be the right attitude to keep Yeah, if we can just chip in with one point, right? I think uh, we need to broaden, and we touched upon stakeholders as a as a topic we discussed. But when we talk about customers and stakeholders, definitely includes that. You should also treat cust you treat the word customer as both internal and external, right? And one of the one of the very critical components that is evolving out of this whole experience that we've had is how well are we employing our uh, how well are we employing technology mm-hmm. to enable our employees. because a happy employee a, a well uh, you know su- supported technologically supported employee automatically becomes an ambassador of the brand in many ways some of which are subconscious some of which are trained and you know thought of so this so the the my my recommendation and request to all marketers would be when you think of customer don't think only of the external customer think of the internal customer as well and so that what harish and anuva said i think we need to infuse technology in offline touch points also see nothing can be devoid of technology so much as we love our stacks and much as we love our marketing automation we also have to infuse technology into our call centers when my salesman is visiting the dealer when my field marketing is visiting the sites i think we have to enable them with technology so that everything actually in seamlessly works with each other i think stitching online and offline is the critical task which we have to now go into digital 2.0 because it's is beyond the stacks uh vishak if i i could add you asked a question long time back which i have been thinking about how the role of cmo has changed and i would like to give perhaps a different uh, thought on that okay please see uh, in these times the role of cmo has changed a lot in the last one year in covid mm-hmm. to my mind three things have changed okay. one is that cmos and head of marketing have to become digital evangelists in the organization you know they had to actually convince all parts of organization to embrace technology whether it was not only about marketing technology it was about technology in call centers technology in enabling dealers to being able to order online technology in connecting with the sites uh, technology everywhere technology in, uh, in customer complaint handling without uh, people being able to go i think working cmos have to work closely with it and digital people across the organization now that's the one change i think which yeah, yeah. needs to happen second is conversation on roi we cannot escape and covid has shown us that because um the marketing there was there was no plan and there was no annual plan there was no half yearly plan we were doing marketing as the markets were opening so it was all zero based budgeting we were targeting markets which were open which were available segments which were uh, available we were doing that so cmos have to get more used to what i call fluid zero based budgeting and planning and they have to become far more agile in managing their budgets and resources gone are the days of annual plans quarterly plans and half yearly plans so and and last but not the least i think uh, thinking beyond all india into regional and localization that's the biggest learning i have learned last year because mm-hmm. uh, and technology comes a, comes to really help in this because uh, we can't always use in tv and print to target we were targeting cities as per the way they were opening and closing and digital is a great medium to do that so we had to customize the campaigns on the fly we had to quickly create uh, product offerings or b2b offerings on the fly at a very short notice and to do campaigns digitally to target a small section of people so i think localization roi and digital evangelism are the three key changes which cmos must bring in themselves and that has been uh, one of my biggest learnings yeah thanks for sharing that yes indeed going from india to bharat and cmos being the linchpin of technology and digital you know for in the organization along with the baseline of roi and being super agile in this new times as such Uh, thank you so much to the sincere thanks to the entire panelists for sharing this amazing thoughts today uh, this was you know so you know uh, i mean in sense it was so insightful i'm sure the audience has enjoyed all the examples the quotes that were actually shared on behalf of et adobe and deloitte thank you so much and i hope we can actually connect again 
on another panel on another topic very soon. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vishak. You enabled a great conversation. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for putting your perspective. Let's proceed to the next session. Don't forget to share your experience and learning on social media using the hashtag ETMarketAsia.